We've got a full house today. It's good to see a lot of people here. So uh, we'll get right into the public session. So if you'd stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Hatch, could you lead us in invocation, please, sir? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we are thankful for this day that you have given us. God, we ask that you be with our council members tonight as they discuss and make plans for the betterment of our community that we all love and call home. Be with us, we pray, in Christ, and we pray. Amen. Please be seated. All right, first is our special presentation request. So uh, we have members of the Capitol High School DECA Club. I understand you're going on a trip. So if someone want to come up and <laughs> come on up. Hi, I'm Jenna I'm here, marketing teacher at Tazewell High School. And um, this year we took 24 students to uh, Virginia Beach to compete um, at the state level. And these two girls here, I'll let them introduce themselves, are going to be competing in Atlanta next Friday. We leave. So go ahead and introduce yourself, girls. My name's Caitlin Church, and my name's Haley Church. Yes, they're sisters. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they, they did a research project with um, Heritage Hall, and they had to develop ways to improve the custom, the employee experience in a post-COVID environment. So it was real-world problem, hands-on, and they did a fantastic job. And then our next two ladies that are attending with us are Taryn and Jane. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was supposed to tell you. <laughs> My name's Taryn Silver. I'm Jane Ritt. And they qualify to attend the Leadership Academy as rising officers for next year in our DECA program. So we're very excited to see what they learn and what they bring back to us. So. Excellent. Well, nice to meet you all. Yeah. So I understand you're looking for a donation for travel expenses. What does our guidelines? Is it 200? I think so. 200? I mean, that's gas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion for yes. about a two minutes. Okay, so we have a, so a motion, we have a second. All in favor, or any discussion? Yes, yeah, but uh, can't, the, the, the guidelines are 200. Yeah. 50 to 200. Huh? 50 to 200. 50 to 200? I'm going to get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> so what you suggest? Uh, 600. I'm sorry, it's, you know, they're going for something special. You have a motion to set. I'm 200. I'm 200. Yeah. Yeah, you got to do something with it. I'm not saying right. you have to, you just got to do something with it. You got a motion to set. Okay. So I guess the motion is going to carry for 200. After discussion, or six <laughs> That's our guidelines. Yeah, yeah. I just think we have to make sure they take the guidelines. Yeah, and that's for one to ten participants. Right. We try to help you now. Just when y'all leave. We leave next Friday. Friday. Next Friday. Yeah, we're gonna be gone through Thursday. Next Friday. The following week. I'm sure Councilman Fox they'll accept additional donations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and I probably would do that, and I hope my council up here would do the same. That way, you, know, you have a good trip. We do certainly appreciate it, and the girls have been fundraising. You know, they they've been you know really working hard, and we're super proud of them. So we almost met them, almost. So. so, all in favor of approval of two hundred dollars? Please say by saying aye. Aye. All of us, they said by saying that. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Thank Thank you. Good luck.
more than welcome to stick around or you can leave. It's up to you. So, you don't have to stay. You don't have to stay. <laughs> <laughs> But to give you a little history, um, is anyone familiar where the Piggyback Cafe used to be on Main Street or where 7 is now? That's where, if you didn't know, that's where our first 911 center was. We had very primitive beginnings. We had a, our consoles were made out of plywood. We had one dispatch console that was all push button and had electron, not, nothing electronic like it is today. We had two phones, and we had four 911 lines, and I think four admin lines. We had no caller ID. We had no mapping that pops up and tells you where they are. You had to get all the directions. Then you either had to look in a map book, which I'm sure maybe Dave remembers from being out maybe years ago. The officers had them, and it was a big book, and it had basically route numbers, unless you wrote in the addresses. That's when you call to go to a phone booth. That's when the phone booths are out. Yep, you still had phone booths and then, too. We had to explain to a lot of people that it's not for you know, calling somebody up or huh, sweetheart, mom, or wife. It's to, it's to 911 answer a call. <laughs> so we had a lot of phone booths there back then. We had um, this 911 in the sheriff's office at that beginning was separate. 911, of course, like I said, is up above the piggyback. Sheriff's office was over in the old jail, and that's where their dispatch was. How they talked together was over an intercom. We didn't have the sheriff's channel. All they had was fire rescue and the town PD. They had the town PD on a separate mobile radio underneath the console, <laughs> and they had a little mic. And of course, all the, all the phones, they picked up a handset just like we used to at home, and that's, that's all you had to communicate. In 2005, we moved over to the water plant on Blackwell Street, if anyone's familiar. We moved upstairs. We went up on the third floor. Only problem, we didn't have elevators. So it was 40 steps all the way up. That's a lot. Much better, much better location, though. We had more rooms. We moved up to three dispatchers. Plus, we had a chief dispatcher. We had a director, which we always had a director. But expand a little further, we now have we still had our handsets, but we now had six 911 lines, four admin lines, 
and we had a map that popped up. It didn't show a whole lot, but it showed a little bit. Wireless calls, you had anywhere from maybe a mile to three miles that you could maybe find where someone was at. In 2010, we moved into our current location, which is out at the old uh, junior high with the sheriff's office. We now have three different kinds of mappings that come up. We actually have headsets and we can talk, we can move around, the dispatchers can talk on uh, the radio on the, through the headset as well as over the phone. Our mapping and our caller ID is all state of the art. We have several new things like for the schools, we have partnered with the uh, county school boards. All of our schools have um, radios as well as a new app called the Panic Button. And the, the school board and the different, excuse me, the school teachers and different staff have the app and everything's geofenced. So if they would have a call, an emergency of some type in say Tazewell Elementary School, they would activate their app that goes directly. There's not even any dial in 911. You push the one button and it comes right into us. It shows us a, a geofenced area of the school. It's going to show us where that teacher is, and then either they can talk to us if it's safe to do so, or they can actually text or chat with us over the phone. So technology has really, really changed. We would like to invite you all up. Tomorrow is our open house from 3 to 7. And we're also recognizing if you would like to come credit from two to three, we're going to recognize our dispatcher, which is Christina Chanel, and she's the one that's been with us for 25 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Also, like to recognize I have some of my dispatchers and deputies here, so appreciate them being here. I say the 911 operators, they they get the full stat from a caller to call it. and it's not good. It's, it's really scary, and it's bad, and it's plus that when the deputy's on the road or a police officer's on the road answering this call, they don't hear from it. It, it scares them, and then automatically they send back up as soon as possible, and I, I appreciate the 911. Um, one other uh, bit of technology we have, I have to show this for the sheriff, is our Rio's Light app, which is a new technology that we're just just starting to use a little bit. You can actually, um, of course, you have to get the permissions and stuff through the center and everything, but you can upload the Rio's app, and it's called Rio's Light. And the sheriff has actually talked to our 911 center from New York. He picked up his phone. He opened up the app, he did push to talk, and he actually talked to uh, Corporal Christian that's sitting in the back there over the radio, and he was standing right next to uh, some New York officers as well as Captain hmm. Hank is here. So we're, we're real excited. Of course, you have to have cell service, and we know our county isn't 100% covered by cell service. We live in the mountains, but it, it looks to be a, a, a nice exciting future for, you know, for you to be just being able to talk over our phones instead of the, the radio as well. Excellent. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And can I comment? Uh, I, you know, I started way back years ago when we talked about all those dispatching centers and stuff, and it has greatly improved, and, you know, the dedication from the men and women who do do this job is, is not thanked enough, and I, and I work with Cindy, Randy Ann and some of the others over the years, and thank I think they do deserve a great, great thank you from the public and also everybody else. Thank you. We are. I'm sorry. I'd like to speak on behalf of law enforcement Absolutely. because these dispatchers, they're the true first responders. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that receive the initial 911 call of that mother that's in labor that doesn't have a way to the hospital. You know, they have to talk to them through childbirth. They're the ones that receive the 911 call of the fatal car accident. They received the call of a child not breathing. You know, us law enforcement officers, we have that information before we get there. They're the ones that get the shock of that mother on the other end of the line screaming. They have to deal with that day in and day out. Those dispatchers, they're the ones who summon the police, fire, rescue, law enforcement. They're the ones that are heard but seldom seen. 
That's the true deep question. You know, they have a tremendous responsibility day in and day out that people don't know. Their lives are in their hands. They're very special to me, and they're so important. They have so many responsibilities at so many different times. The town of Tassel could have maybe a car chase going on. We may have a shooting going on. They have one room that they handle all of this, and they're just so underappreciated, I can't thank them enough for everything they do. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for keeping us safe, keeping the community safe, and hope you have a good week. Thank you. I just want to apologize for all the times I've sat on my phone and <laughs> I've been there. I apologize too. Yeah. I would like to say I'm very thankful the only time I've had to call 911 is for a controlled burn. So <laughs> well, thank you guys very much. Next on the agenda is a uh, town representative needed for board of trustees, Mr. Donnie Yates. Good evening. Good evening. Thank y'all for putting me on the agenda for tonight. This is my fifth council meeting so far. And I just want to say one thing before I get started. This will be the fourth one that have recognized the young people in our community. We need that. I agree. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about the Tazewell County Fair. Uh, this year is going to be a special year for us. It'll be the 150th anniversary of the Thousand County Fair. Uh, and for any tech fans in here tonight, uh, Thousand County Fair was started the same year Virginia Tech was founded. <laughs> also the year Concord University was founded. Really? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we're hoping this will be a really special year for us. Uh, we're uh, excited about it. We've got a few things booked already. We were able to get uh, a uh, mobile museum for the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, it'll be at the fair three days this week. And we've got some attractions booked already uh, but we're, we're working hard every day trying to get others but but uh, we want to uh, make sure that this that we can do the best we can to make this a true Tassel County Fair and what we're asking is for y'all to pick someone it uh, could be one of y'all, you, or just someone in the community that's active in the community. Uh, and it would be volunteer. We're very frugal. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's someone that we want to have meetings with. And then this person can come back and relate to you what we have told them and keep the town in the know of what's going on and we really do recommend suggestions if you have any uh, please give those to your representative i'll be uh, calling in probably about another month or so uh, calling the town to see if you have someone yet and to try to get the meeting started and worked out. Uh, but like I said, we are really looking forward to this year. We've been working hard. Uh, 2020, we didn't get to have the fair because of COVID. Uh, but we are still hanging on to our record of being the longest continuous running county fair in the Commonwealth, Virginia. Uh, we have, uh, one thing we have booked already is uh, Cody Wickline, who was a finalist on The Voice, I think a year or so ago. We have him booked for this year. Uh, we're 
country and western fans ought to enjoy that. We're still working on our gospel talent. But that's basically where we're at. And we wholeheartedly would like each town's participation in this and make everybody aware of what's going on. Yeah, I was shocked when I went to the fair door to work. It goes into it. It's, uh, I have one gentleman from Florida right now I've been playing phone tag with for two months off. That is, but uh, it's a labor of love. If you live and take from a community, you need to give back to your community, sir. But that's all I have, unless y'all have any questions. Or How often do you meet? Pardon? How often do you meet? Uh, once a month. Once a month. Is that on what day? Tuesday night, same night as y'all's, I believe. Okay. Just wondering what um, time commitment the individual would need to. Uh, I wouldn't think more hour, hour and a half at the most. Okay. So, Donnie, you're missing your board meeting right now. Pardon? You're missing your board meeting right now. No, I'm the foul of South Town this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call it off. <laughs> we'll have it next week. <laughs> well, we'll try to uh, come up with a, with a name to submit and talk to them and, and try to get someone within the month. Right. Right. Okay, thank y'all very much. Thank, thank you. you. Next on the agenda is the Recognized Employee Accomplishments Manager Day. All right. Every time I get an opportunity for a member of my staff, which by the way goes the extra mile to make me even look, I ain't even say look good. Um, I'm very proud of them and the accomplishments they have. But for the last several months, I've got two employees, Leanne and also Tracy, who work in the front office that have been taking the program. And Weldon Cooper, for those of you who may not remember, Weldon Cooper is a branch of UVA, it's a, it's a subsidiary of UVA. But the um, School of Continuing and Professional Studies recognizing Leanne. Reagan of the town of Tizer has successfully completed the requirements for certification and is hereby awarded the title of the Master Governmental Treasurer. The 15th day of November 2004. <laughs> All right, now you got five minutes to do your speech. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> also, Tracy Lewis, who also works in the front office, has successfully completed the requirements for certification and hereby awarded the title of Master Governmental Deputy Treasurer, 15th day of November 2021. <laughs> Good job, man. It's always good when we can uh, recognize employees and people of our town in general. But, uh, great job. So, uh, new business recognition, unfortunately none. Uh, next is the approval of the council meeting minutes for March 8, 2022. Can I get a motion to approve? So a motion. To get a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor of approval of minutes, say so by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, say so by saying nay. All right, then last month's minutes, minutes are approved. Next is the approval of financial statements and financial reports for March 2022. Need a motion to approve. So moved. Need a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor of approval, say so by saying aye. Aye. All approved, or all opposed, say so by saying nay. All right, financial statement, financial report approved. Next is the committee and conference updates. We're going to get a planning commission committee update by Council Member Davis. All right, the planning commission met last Monday. Um, we had a pretty short session. We talked about um, there was a proposal to come forward to do a vacate an alley, and that is going to be discussed later on in our 
agenda. Um, the Planning Commission approved everything and suggested that it come on up to Council to be set for a public hearing. Um, we also discussed um, tiny houses. And in the tiny houses, I believe that they are required to meet building code. So, and we don't believe that we need to take any action to define tiny houses, tiny houses in our specific code. Since they are required to meet building code, they were just any property that could have multiple properties. Dwelling units. Yeah, multiple dwelling units. They could have tiny houses if they want, but it would have to fit in with the zoning requirements. Um, and Chris gave us an update on the town annex property, which I believe we're talking about a little later too. That was it. Any questions? Okay, so next we're moving to unfinished business. Manager Dace will give us an update on the recreational access grant. Yeah, uh, Mayor, that's discussed during the work session. I'd like to remove that. We'll take it up at the next meeting. We did open up bids Friday, but uh, unfortunately, we have not got around to tallying those finals and making recommendations yet. So, okay. fair enough. So, uh, next. Ahead. We're going to get an update on all the additional projects. Yeah, um, I just want to point out a couple that we're working on. Of course, the ball field, everybody's aware that um, we've spent a lot of time on the ball field, and I've got a dozen phone calls of appreciation for cancel making that decision to do that. And it's really looking good out there. The fields, their shells will be redone. Um, we're putting some money to completely revamping both fields, but the weather is. So there, I got a message from the guy today starting on the 18th. Okay, so hope we, we originally had it the first of the month, and unfortunately the weather just pushed them back. So and it needs it too. It's like it's like riding a roller coaster running around the field. Um, Rainy, if you've been by there lately, uh, you, you can tell that there's a lot of changes going on right there. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, both of those buildings that are remaining now will be down. Uh, so they're, they're going to be way ahead of schedule. Way, way. It's a 120-day project. And the only reason we did that was to give them an opportunity to capitalize on the assets there. And it also dropped, dropped our price. So but they're going to be way way ahead of schedule and that's all i've got to, for right now you've got it in front of you uh, um, tnl reports on all the other projects so if you got any questions so. i tell you i tried to take my kids out to the rainy lot just so they could watch it neither one of them went to get it <laughs> i wanted to go and watch it <laughs> So uh, now we're going to our new business section. So uh, what was mentioned earlier, the setting the joint public hearing for the alley closure request. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay you, you've got it in your, in your packet there. It's a plain view GIS drawing of where the alley is located. I'm sure most of you are pretty much familiar with it. It's right off the riverside. It's a small section of the alley that we've looked at and haven't been able to identify any complications or reasons why we wouldn't close that alley. Typical process for alley closures is to give each landowner on adjacent side the opportunity to purchase the property based on tax assessed value. Um, in this situation, you're going to have the same landowner who will also be responsible for paying that price, you know, a tax assessed value. Um, I think the Commonwealth, I know the town code book also establishes that there must be a committee designed and put together. We have not done that. That committee is usually a building official, public work director, chief of police. To go out and look at it, evaluate it based on their professions and what they do to see if there's any complications there. So with that being said, I think Chris is looking for a uh, company out here. Chris, y'all looking to go to public hearing next month? Yes. So, so 10 May? Yeah. 
If you have any questions about it, of course, um, we'll answer them. Uh, but the Planning Commission has reviewed it, and looked at it, and dug pretty deep into it, and obviously pushed it to ten chances. We'll see. We need a motion to just proceed and go to public hearing. And between now and the public hearing, I will create that committee and line up the code book. Okay, so can I get a motion to schedule a joint public hearing for the alley closure request for 10 May? Motion. Yes, second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor, say so by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say so by saying nay. All right, so it'll be scheduled for 10 May, the next council meeting. Uh, next is a funding recommendation, Manager Day. Okay, I've been begging the fire department for years to buy a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, as, all of you, as all of you are aware, <laughs> we, <laughs> oh, it's going to be a good day tomorrow. Like <laughs> um, as each of you are, are aware, we they they did due diligence and were able to find one that they feel like exceeds the capabilities, uh, and um, they will actually be going down tomorrow. Is that right, Chief? Tomorrow, yeah. I mean, what Thursday? Isn't it? Tomorrow, Thursday. 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 That's what TJ said. Okay. But anyway, they'll be going down to pick it up. I want to talk to you a little bit about funding. Uh, cost on it was 180k. Um, the county, I haven't got an official notice. I got some e email, but I think the county is going to contribute over half the cost of that, which is $100,000 to go toward it. And obviously, um, obviously the county would want to keep up the same relationship we have now in place right now, which if we ever get a call, regardless of where, it, where it's at for backup anywhere in the county, we'll do that. So my recommendation is that, that we don't finance this. We, we actually, um, pay cash for it, we utilize 100,000. And again, I want to echo, I don't have any official documentation, it's just my understanding. And then use the, uh, the funds available on the general fund, the $80,000 of uh, ARPA to uh, completely pay off this fee, we'll figure it out and completely pay it off. And if you'll recall, council actually voted to put a portion of funds toward EMS and that could be the second financial structure. I'll make a motion to do exactly what you just said. <laughs> I'll say that motion now. You say the hundred thousand can come to the county. Well, that's what my, yeah. my question is: Can we do that? And we don't have a definitive amount. I would do it, and if it doesn't come true, I'll just we'll just we will we'll reevaluate it. Uh, if I don't, I'm gonna have to go to a bank. Okay. So I just didn't know if it. No, I proceed. I proceed if my understanding is wrong. I'll talk to Southern District Supervisor before long. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it can be 110 or 120. <laughs> but I don't know if that's a, official yet, but again, it's, it's my understanding from some pretty good sources. So, uh, and again, if it's not, we'll back up and be ready for another recommendation next month. So. Okay. All in favor of Kirby spending money, stay set by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, stay set by saying nay. Actually, right, so the funding recommendation is approved. Next is a resolution of support by Department of Emergency Response across Tazewell County. Andrew Day. Yeah, I've got a resolution here. And this resolution just pretty much adds to the teamwork, the relationship that we've already got with the county. Uh, we don't have anything in place right now, but I can assure you that if I was a representative of the Board of Supervisors, they have constituents all over the county. And they need to be sure that they're spending funds adequately. I think the resolution is great. Whereas the county has will understand the necessity of a well-equipped fire department in order to adequately address emergency situations when called on. And whereas the town of Tazewell desires the willingness and cooperation of other fire departments in Tazewell County when called upon to help assist in emergency situations inside the political jurisdiction of the town of Tazewell. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town council hereby commits to responding with our platform truck and any other emergency equipment across Tazewell County when called upon to support 
other existing fire departments in need. Adopted this 21st day, 12th day of April, 2019. Got a little dyslexic there, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I did. But I need. Go ahead. And on that motion, it will be somebody at the fire station to answer calls here in town if the fire. Yeah, we'll just send out like one crew to help mutual aid. Obviously, the ladder truck if they need it. But we'll keep a crew here. Oh, great. That's, I'm yeah. all for it. Then. We have a truck that we specifically send out to the county when they request it. And we've, all, we've always sent our platform truck when they need it. So really nothing's changed. We're just, we're we're just making it official. Yeah. I'll make the motion. I, I guess second. second. All in favor of approving the resolution, space there by saying aye. 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 All opposed, space there by saying nay. All right, resolution's approved. Now, for some reason, that hundred thousand dollars doesn't come through. I'm bringing that resolution back. <laughs> so we'll just resolution. This is an agreement that's already in place, by the way. It's just never been on paper. Right. So uh, next, Chief Mills will discuss a permit application. Yeah, this is something that we've been needing for a while. Um, yes. I've researched several different locations around it and asked if they had a permit to kind of give us control of what went on on Main Street, mainly is what this is for. In the past, and I think Brad can testify that we have had people that have been very disruptive during these. I think this kind of controls the atmosphere and who we have on Main Street participating. Uh, this is something that uh, I had Brad look over, I think Todd, and then I had Brad look over, and this seems to tick all the boxes that we need. Of course, it might need something down the road that we need to change, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory on what is asked of the person that's asking close to the street. The task of the day each time yeah. they have yeah. we need it. They'll have to do them, and we'll give you a stack of them. Yeah. And I sent uh, this to Vanessa today and I told her if she had any questions and I'll try to get with her probably tomorrow and go over her and, and explain why we did this and if there's any questions I'll try to get her answers. Excellent. I need a motion to approve the permit application. One thing I'd like to discuss I think we, we discussed it briefly before is possibly putting a list of the vendors and the nature of their business that they might have at these events because we may have you know Sure. That may be beneficial to us in other ways, uh, you know. Oh, for yeah, because you know, tip sales and meals tax, meals tax yeah. and, and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that. No, that's a that's a great idea. And I, I'm not sure if Tazel today has got a protocol set up for that yet, but I'll I'll talk to Tazel today. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's a great idea, and it has been brought up. I can tell you, years ago. Uh, Back in 2012, 2013, the idea was to get vendors on Main Street. Period. Mm -hmm. Right. There wasn't any restaurants, and I purposely waived uh, any fees or calls back to the town just to, and we conceded that. So, yeah, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, I'll make a motion for the chief to proceed on with his application. Can I get a second? A second. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the permit application, state so by saying aye. Aye. Um, all opposed, state by, state so by saying nay. All right, Chief. Thank you. Three moving forward. So next is the resolution of honor for Mr. Jim Baldwin. Mary, I'm there. I know you'd like to do you more. Yeah, I, can, I can remember. I've got it up. All right, go right here. So this is the resolution of honor. Whereas James A. Jim Baldwin, longtime employee of the Cumberland Plateau Planning District Commission, has successfully held multiple positions within CPPDC for over 50 years, starting in February 1972. And whereas Jim Baldwin grew up in Southwest Virginia and was a graduate of Honecker High School and completed his education career studying at the College of William and Mary. Whereas in July 2006, Jim Baldwin assumed the position of Executive Director at CPPDC, serving, as, serving the counties of Buchanan, Dickerson, Russell, and Tazewell. And whereas Jim Baldwin's accomplishments are extensive, including but not limited to clean, clean drinking water projects, high-speed broad, broadband internet, and wireless connectivity, along 
with downtown improvement projects and much, much more. Whereas Jim Baldwin has served on countless numbers of boards and authorities, and whereas Jim Baldwin's service to the region can be seen all across the CPP DC operating area. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Michael F. Hoops, Mayor of the Town of Tassel, with the Town Council, do hereby commend Jim Baldwin for his 50 years of service to the Cumberland Plateau Planning District Commission and to its localities in Southwest Virginia. Adopted this 12th day of April, 2022. Yeah, I move that we adopt the resolution to honor Jim Baldwin's retirement. I get a second. second. Any discussion? All in favor of approval, say so by saying aye. Aye. Uh, All opposed, say so by saying nay. All right, resolution is approved. So the next is uh, annexation discussion. Manager Day. Yeah, just want to get a quick update. I know several of you asked me about the annexation. I can assure you that Aaron and I have been in great communication. I've actually spoke more with Aaron in his time in office than I have. Uh, well, anyway, uh, <laughs> but it's going very well. Um, and he's doing due diligence on the information that we've given him. He's got all the information that we have, uh, addresses, names, etc. And uh, he's doing what he needs to do on his end to talk to his constituents. And, looking forward to working with him over the next several months to have it finalized, have it, have it, have it decided. Yeah. Awesome. Excellent. So is there any miscellaneous items that didn't see anything? Oh, we added that one. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so uh, we need to vote for a public hearing on the budget approval. Would we want to do that on 10 May also? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say in public hearing to discuss budget approval on May 10th. Stay so by or stay so by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed stay so by saying nay. All right. That is approved. So next is everyone's lane public comment. Nobody. So finally, any council member comments? Nope. I don't have any groundhogs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. I get a second. Second. All in favor of adjourning, stay so by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, stay so by saying nay. Adjourn. Wow.